Hi everyone and welcome to another Blender Quick Tip. Today I'm going to be showing you how you can bring a really simple abstract motion graphic to life using Blender's very own Compositor. Now this is the animation that we're going to be editing in the Compositor. Uh, this is it before and this is it after. And if you haven't already, I'd advise you to check out one of my recent tutorials where I show you how I actually make these abstract motion graphics. It's a really simple process and you can get a lot of different variations by just changing a few parameters as well, which is really cool. So I advise you to check that out. I'll be leaving a link down below. If you have your own, that's fine. Uh, you can use your own, but um, this is only really gonna work on something that hasn't got too much going on. So it has to be quite a simple sort of animation for this to work. But uh, yeah, on with the tutorial. So once you have your animation all ready to go, you've done all the shading and all that and all the animating, um, first thing you have to do to actually start using the compositor is you have to actually just render an image. So if you just pick any uh, frame, just pick a frame where there's a bit going on. We'll say this frame in this case. You don't want to render the whole animation just yet. You just want to render the image. So yeah, select your frame that you want to use. It doesn't really matter what frame you select, but the more data you have sort of in the scene, the better. It kind of gives you a better idea of what you're working with. So we're going to just render this frame for now. So hit F12 and just wait for that to render. You're going to get this image here. You can just close that for now. We don't need that. Now if you just come over to your compositing tab here, this is where you're gonna do all the work. The first thing you wanna do is check this box, use nodes, because we're gonna be using nodes. Normally that should automatically populate, but if it doesn't, just hit Shift A. The first thing you want is an input, and you want it to be render layers. And once you add that, it should already be there for you, most of you, depending on what you've done in the scene and what your preferences are set as. You can see the render just there in small. But we wanna get a better view of the image, so you wanna hit Shift A, and you wanna to go to output, and you want to select viewer node and just pop that anywhere and just plug the image into the viewer node and now it's going to fill up the whole window and you can move your nodes around just by holding the middle mouse and now we're going to hit shift a and we're going to add a new node and you'll see there's lots of different uh, nodes you can add that will give you different sort of options when compositing so you can do color adjustments um, you've got all these converters and you've got these filters as well like blurs and all that in this case we're going to go to filter and we're going to add glare. I'm just going to pop that in between the two so it plugs the render into the glare node and then out to the viewer node so we can see what's going on. And that's a pretty cool effect, but for this tutorial, change streaks to ghosts. I really love this uh, effect, I think it looks really cool. We're going to make this high quality, and here you can change iterations, and that's sort of, um, sort of the amount of ghosts that on screen it goes up to five I think and I think five is a bit too strong in my opinion so there's a lot going on there I think in this case it looks good at three but if you're using a different render you probably want to play around with that to your liking you have this color modulation parameter here it sort of changes the uh, color tone and contrast of the uh, actual nodes and what it's doing again that's just down to personal preference but we're gonna leave it around there for this one and I'll mix that mixes in the level of the input signal see there if I put it on one the original render has completely disappeared. You can get some really cool sort of ethereal uh, renders when you do that. And then obviously if you put mix to minus one, it's gonna have the opposite effect. All you're gonna see is the render. But we're gonna leave that as zero for this. And then there's the threshold as well. Uh, you don't need to play with that for this one, but it can be quite handy if you have a lot of iterations. It can kind of help you balance out the um, sort of strength of the ghosts. Um, it also affects the color modulation as well. I'm not too sure exactly what's going on in the back end when you adjust it, but it does seem to sort of tame things out a bit when you pump it up. Um, but for this, I think it looks good at one. Now there are some limitations with Blender's compositor. Um, it is a bit disappointing to work with because you can only sort of work with one frame. You can't see it in effect in real time if that makes sense so it can be a bit annoying to work with with animations that's pretty much done there only thing left now to do is render it out but before you do that if you render it out like this it's actually not gonna have any effect so everything you've done in this compositor is going to be useless uh, that's because we haven't plugged the filter into an output node so what you want to do is hit shift a Come to output and you want to select composite and just pop that there and you just want to plug the filter into the composite output node 
and then you're done that's pretty much it so I'm gonna render out the animation now so if you just come to your render properties make sure um, if it's an animation change the container to mp4 video codec have that at h264 output quality perception lossless and just save it somewhere you can find it and then when that's done just come to render and hit render animation and you're done Right, thank you guys for watching. I hope you learned something from this. This uh, ghost effect can be a bit strong or if uh, your scene has a lot going on. So I would use it on really basic motion graphics. I think works best. If you feel like you learned something from this, please hit the like and subscribe. It really helps me grow the channel. And if you want to learn how to make these sort of abstract motion graphics really easily, I've got another tutorial which I'm just going to link. I'll be leaving a link to that tutorial in the description of this video and you should see it pop up on the cards. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram, that's at Nedmotion, and feel free to check out more of my work on my website, that's nedmotion.co.uk.